Today's story is about an unsung artist who had a top 10 hit in an era that was dominated by Teddy Pendergrass, Barry White, and the whole Motown roster. Others refer to this as a one-hit wonder, while I refer to you as a legend. The very fact that you still have people bring up your name and your music says a lot. Today's story is about none other than Ronnie Dyson. Before we get started in today's video, please be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to stay up to date. Now without further ado, let's cue that intro. Rhino Dyson was born in Washington, D.C. on June 5th, 1950. When he was a child, his family would move to Brooklyn, New York, and it was here that he discovered he had a voice. Like other singers, Dyson fell in love with music and singing at his family church, the Washington Temple that was located in the Bed Stuy area. When Dyson was just 17 years old, in the spring of 1968, he would get his big break when he would land a role on a Broadway production of the groundbreaking rock musical, Hair. Dyson's celebrity grew as he sang the opening theme for the television show of Quays, which was specifically written for him. The R&B group Fifth Dimension would later rework the song in 1969. This demonstrated the many volumes Dyson dealt with during the course of his career. Hey, listen, you've uh, done an awful lot very early. Do you mind if I ask you how old are you? 22. 22 years old. Right. How old were you when you were in hair? 17. I don't know whether people rem remember this or not, but uh, Ronnie was the guy who came out and sung Aquarius. Uh, you know, the moon is in the seventh house, whatever it is, you right. know? That was like one of the hits of the whole show, you know? Right, and that song was written for me. They didn't have anything for me to do in the show, and so they wrote that song for me and it became quite a hit. He made the decision to pursue a career on Broadway after his experience on hair. He would earn a lead role in the play Salvation in 1970. For this play, Dyson, he would release a song, If You Let Me Make Love To You, Then Why Can't I Touch You? If you let me make love to you, then why? This song performed so well that he attracted the attention of Columbia Records. Dyson would make a career decision to pursue a music career instead of a Broadway career, since this record was very high received. His debut album of the same name was published and it peaked at number 55 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 12 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. This album also had another charted single with I Don't Wanna Cry. Just like I did before. But in 1971, Dyson covered the Del Finest hit when you come right down to it. Don't you just feel this moment says everything. Columbia, they brought Dyson to Philadelphia in 1973 to collaborate with legendary music producer Tom Bell. Now, Bell highly orchestrated approach really complimented Dyson harmonies. So well that Dyson published One Man Band, which was his second album that peaked at 132 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 34 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. The title song, All my life I've been alone, but I never really cared. Just and Just Don't Want to Be Lonely was both charted singles from this album. I don't mind when you say that you're going. Dyson's high falesso was so wonderful that it's a shame he didn't achieve the same amount of recognition as his peers, such as Curtis Mayfield, Isaac Hayes, and Donny Hathaway, to mention a few. Around the start of the 70s, record labels such as Stax and Motown was defining the sounds of blackness for the general public. Throughout the first 10 years of his career, Dyson spent this time discovering his voice since he didn't want to follow any trends. He preferred to do things his way. Hence, when Dyson's third album was ready for release, Columbia had teamed him up with two of the industry's best producers, Marvin Yancey and Charles Chuck Jackson from The Independence. Now, Jackson is the brother of Reverend Jackson Jackson. Dyson would release his third album titled The More You Do It, and this album had peaked at number 30 on the Billboard Top Army Albums charts. The title track. Close to You was two of the charted songs from this album. I like being close to you. 
Dice's fourth album, Love and All Flavors, was released and peaked at number 45 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. This album has one charted hit single titled, Don't Be Scared. Don't be afraid, no, no. Now, when Dice's fifth album came out, titled If the Shoe Fits, it didn't chart. But his previously four albums had achieved respectable positions on the Billboard charts. But as soon as he released one album that didn't, he was dismissed. This demonstrates how labels use artists when they no longer have any value to them. In 1979, Dyson would make a cameo appearance in the film based off the play Hair. Dyson's career as an actor and singer came to a standstill in the late 70s when his health began to deteriorate. In 1980, Dyson, he would secure a new contract with Cotillion Records, a subsidiary label of Atlantic Records. In 1982, Dyson, he would release two albums under this new label with Phase 2 and Brand New Day, which had peaked at number 53 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums Charts. Throughout the 80s, Dyson, he would see the Billboard Charts at least four more times, including the 1982 singles, Heart to Heart, Let's have a little heart to heart conversation and bring it on home. There's something missing in your life. 1983 single, All Over Your Face. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed. I don't even. And a 1991 duet with Vicky Austin, Are We So Far Apart? Now, at the age of 40, Dyson, he was sadly passed away from heart failure on November 10th, 1990. And ironically, his father would pass away earlier that same year from the very same condition. Now, there's a number of theories to why someone with Dyson's talent never really had much long-term success. There's also incredible musicians in the music industry that go through this very same thing. But in reality, they either need help finding the proper material or they don't have the right audience. Now I have two questions for you guys. Which Rodney Dyson songs is you guys favorite? Also, what other one hit wonders would you guys like for me to cover?